Hi, good evening everybody and welcome to our year 11 information evening. Um, first of all, apologies that we were, were unable to do this in school uh, for, for obvious reasons, but what I'd, what I'd have liked to have done is to, to open up the hall this evening and present it and put some uh, stands around just with some information on what we're doing and how we're supporting year 11 this year. Um, clearly that's not possible. So I still think it's really important that we, we, we give out some of that information um, as, to, as to what we're going to do with year 11 this year and, and our expectations. Um, but we, we will do it by this virtual way and, and hopefully we'll find some opportunity this year to get together personally um, and, and, and uh, discuss how they're getting on and, and further interventions and support that we can provide. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you're aware of who I am, but it, for those of you that I've not, I've not met as yet, I'm James Aldred, I'm head teacher here at, at the Garibaldi School, and I'm going to be ably assisted by a number of colleagues this, this evening who are uh, going to give you a little bit of insight into some of the different areas of Year 11 and what that looks like. Um, so first of all, year 11 is a, is a, is a difficult year for, or, or at, the, at the best of times, uh, due to the fact that it's the first time that students have um, really, for the majority, uh, had, a, had a little bit of pressure or have had to experience an exam system. And despite the first um, 10 years at school, year 11 is the year where um, it all comes together and students start to experience some pressure and some anxieties. And although it's not nice, I would say at this point in time, it is quite normal for a year 11 student. Um, obviously, we're in a slightly different context, we're in a slightly different position this year, and I'll, I'll, I'll go on to that in a few minutes time. Um, and, and again, hence why we're doing this evening, because what I want to do is to help to reduce some of those anxieties and to give you as parents and you as students some information about what we're doing to make sure that the situation uh, of the last six months doesn't impact on yourself and, and the potential progress that you could have made. So tonight is about understanding what year 11 looks like for a Garibaldi student. So we'll talk to you um, about what a, a, a typical year 11 uh, year looks like but what we'll do is we'll intertwine with that what we're doing to support you um, given the fact that from March to September um, school as we know it um, was very different and and therefore what provision we're going to put in place to help year 11 students to be successful and I, I'll, I'll talk in a little while about partnerships and working with parents and students and that camaraderie of we're all in this together and we've, we've all got the same uh, goals in mind, the same outcome, and that's to make sure that we give the students the, the, the best, the ultimate set of keys to unlock the best future possible for them. And I know that, you know, we're all we're all on uh, board with that. So what we're also what we're going to do tonight is supplement that with some information on uh, the pastoral care and the guidance and the mentoring support that will be available to students. Um, I'm going to give you some insight into the post 16 provision here at Garibaldi School just so that you're aware of, of what that option looks like. We're going to give you a little bit of insight into um, the, the, um, our progression into some of the virtual learning and some of the, the experiences that we've had between March and now and how we're capitalising on that to support students moving forward um, and, and let's give some revision and study techniques to help and support with that um, and what's important to say and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this again later on but this, uh, this video, this information will be shared on the website and I know you've already received a package of information through the post which supplements the, uh, this evening's presentation also. So, you know, in, in my 23 years of being involved in education, last year um, had to be one of the most uh, surreal years really and it was a, a year that was totally unexpected and didn't play out in, in the way that we could foresee. And even in March when uh, we, the school was placed in a situation where we were only open for vulnerable students or for key worker provision. That was only ever going to be a two, three, four week provision. And, and we thought that the, the country would be going back to normal and that's the advice that was, was given um, and, and that we would continue. So everything that we did was very um, 
short termist and reactionary. And so what we've done as, as um, you know, this situation continued to evolve is we've, we've tried to flip the balance with it so that we're not reacting to this as a situation, but we're being really proactive and, and thinking that this could happen again. So therefore, what do we need to do to make sure that we maximise the educational provision? Um, but also that there are no excuses from anybody and that's that there's no excuses from us because we'll have a cast iron provision in place if, if that does need to happen. But also um, the, the students and, and the, what we'll talk about tonight, the things that we've put in place 2020, as we know it so far from March to September, um, it, it doesn't have to um, be an excuse for students not to achieve because everything that we're doing, everything that we're going to put in place is to recoup some of that time and to make sure that the students are as skilled up as possible and that they've got every bit of information, skills and knowledge required um, to, to be really successful in their exams. And what I talk about to staff and to students and, and to, to stakeholders is that what this situation has provided, although it's not been um, the, a, a nice situation and, um, you know, and, and and although we've had to react so far, actually what it's brought about are some opportunities and it's given us an opportunity to look at how we can do things differently and how we can support differently and how we can schedule things like the day or the support that's on offer to students. And, and the question that I'll, I'll pose is, um, how have you seen this as a student as an opportunity and as parents, how can you help to see this as an opportunity? Because what I'd like students to do, and again, I've talked to them about this already through my assemblies, is I want them to take this as an opportunity and see the positives that may come from it, certainly through their educational provision, rather than get a couple more weeks in and, and for them to feel that they've missed some opportunities. Mathematically, um, we're about 18% of the way through year 11 um, now and you know time is time is ebbing away and, and what I want to do again is, is in that mindset, that growth mindset of students, get them to see that um, they still have got the time uh, to be who they want to be and that they can take these opportunities as, as they're given to them. So just to highlight some of the opportunities that we've put in place for, for year 11 so far and Again, this is different. We've, we've looked at our provision very differently and looked at what can we do with year 11 students and for year 11 students um, to ensure that their progress is maximised. I can't just get six months and add it on to the end of the timetable. That would be great, or their time. That would be great if we could. But what we've got is, or what the students have got, is they've got 32 weeks left or 32 weeks from September of input and um, working in schools with a view to sitting their exams at the end of year 11 still. And that, and that is what the panacea is, and that's what the government has set out, that they will still be undertaking their GCSE exams. So in order to ensure that students are well set up, on the board there, on, on my presentation, of some of the opportunities, some of the different things that we've done to make the most out of this year for year 11. OK, now some of these aspects we, we may have done in, in, a, in a very stripped back way. But what this situation has allowed us to do is to totally review how we do things um, to reallocate some of the finances in school to support year 11. And, you know, I'll, and I would add at this point in time, year 11 is a really important year. All right, It is the culmination of their education so far. And we do heavily support year 11 through this year, but even more so. This last six months is through no fault of their own. So I want them to get to their exams, having having been fully equipped with everything that they need to be a success. So we've, we've adapted the timetable. And as many of you know, um, for Monday to Thursday, we, we operate on Monday to Friday. We operate six lessons of 50 minutes. But from Monday to Thursday, the timetable now doesn't finish until 10 to 4. And what that does is it allows us extra curriculum time um, over the course of the school day and the school week. And, and it will recoup some of that time that they, they may have lost earlier in, in the years from March to September. Um, we've given improved access and increased access to IT provision and Mr Chatton uh, will, will be talking about some of that provision in a few minutes time and how we can maximise its use. We've been able to allocate smaller group sizes, so there's a little bit more personal contact in classes. Um, 
we've, we've provided an additional study provision. So through intervention mentoring and through study support and through work with mentors, what, we, what we've managed to do is build in um, a period of the timetable a week where they can work independently on their study, taking work from different departments that, that they may be behind in or that they can do some extra work on um, to bolster the progress that they're making. Well, we've, we've actually allocated that as a timetable provision. Um, it's important that um, to know that all work and no play is not is not good. And I would never advocate that, you know, it's work, 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 work. There's got to be a balance in it. And, and it's really important that students factor in time for that, that social time as well. And that goes during the school day as well. And, you know, we're operating in bubbles. There is a dedicated social provision in school to allow them that downtime well away from classrooms so that they can socialise and just have a little bit of time uh, talking to friends. Um, so they're just some of the things and some of those bullet points will be captured more from colleagues as, as, as we go through the presentation. What, what, I'm, what I hasten to say at this point is that I'm really proud of Year 11, how they've come back in September and how they, they've got 100% focus. OK, I'm really proud of going into classrooms and seeing the work ethic of students and their contribution to um, maximising the progress that they can make personally. I've had some really lovely conversations with people um, and you know the attendance to school, the behaviour has been absolutely phenomenal of year 11 students. So already um, we, we're taking massive steps in the right direction for every student to, to achieve beyond their capabilities. Um, so they're the opportunities. I've already said so far that um, year 11, we give lots of time and, and, and support to anyway. But I want to give you my own personal assurance that um, I, I won't leave any stone unturned and, and we will make sure that if there is anything else that we can do to support the students, well, well, we'll find a way of getting that to them. We'll find a way of giving them that extra support that they may need. If, if there's an extra hour of maths that a particular student might need because they're not sure on something, well, what I'd encourage students to do is talk to the mentors, um, talk to the student support team, okay, and keeping that communication with us because I will leave no stone left unturned to make sure that students achieve the best they can possibly achieve when they leave, but also that they've got the skills and characteristics ready to be successful later in life also. Um, I've, I've referred to this partnership and I've referred to communication a couple of times, but um, it is really important that students have those open dialogue, have, sorry, has open dialogue with the with the teachers and, and the mentor at school and, and that they talk to us about how they're feeling, any struggles they might have, any support that they feel they might need. Because again, if I was to refer back to that last slide, all right, we'll do whatever we can to support them. I'll talk in a minute about the formula and, and different contributions that we have in school. And this is a universal formula that everybody that um, students and staff alike know about. But I want to share it with parents so that you're aware of it and you can see everybody's role in ensuring students are successful at the end. But what I want to do is, is through this presentation, outline what, what we will do. And I'm hoping that you get a sense that we'll, we'll do whatever we can to, to make sure they're successful. But also, you know, the students we talk to regularly about their part in it. But for parents as well, we, we've, we've got the same um, end goal. We want your children to be as successful as they possibly can be. So I'd encourage you to keep in regular touch with the mentor. Or if you've got any questions, for you to please get in touch with us as well. And if you use the website, the best way to get in touch with any of us is by email. We can't always come to a phone to answer a phone if we're teaching. But on the staff list page of the school website is everybody's email address. So if, if there is something that you want to ask a particular teacher or a bit of information you need, or even just to let us know of something, I'd encourage you to, to do that. And that by working in partnership, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the most out of it for, for the young people. Um, so our formula uh, looks like that. And it's not mathematically correct, so I'll, I'll put that caveat out there to start with. But the bit in brackets is the bit that we expect of students. And if they do the bits in the brackets at the top, then students are going to achieve well. And it's it's proven here that if students have a great ATL, so it's lower than 1.9, and we don't have to issue consequences, and attendance in particular, you can't possibly learn if you're not in front of that expert teacher or you're not going to learn as effectively. So the best place to be is in school. So that's the student's contribution, 1.9 ATL. 
no consequences and attendance above 96 percent attendance then they're going to do really well my role in it is to make sure that the teaching is the absolute best it could possibly be and i'll, I'll go back to that leaving that stone unturned um, you know we're always in lessons we're always um, advising teachers on how they can become even better than they already are and, and again there's an amazing set of teachers here that all want your children to do really well but i'll make sure that teaching is the best that it could possibly be and then all of us um you know we, we relate to that bit at the bottom of the formula right because we really do care about the students here we really do want them to be the best that they could possibly be and get the most out of the you know their career in Garibaldi and in the big wide world also all right and if we all play our part in it and you provide that compassion and support and that we all work together in that partnership then students will achieve amazing outcomes okay and, and they'll become the most well-rounded individuals that they could possibly become and, and that's what we're all striving for I, I will add at this point in time unfortunately i don't have a crystal ball um, and, and i said at the beginning of my presentation that um, as it currently stands at the end of this year students will be sitting the exams in exactly the same way as everybody else in the past has sat exams Last year, there was a slight difference to year 11 because they were in that situation where school was in lockdown. Their grades were determined by teacher and centre assessed grades. Um, as it currently stands, that won't be the case. Students will be sitting exams at the end of this year and, and it's everybody's, ours, parents and students responsibilities to make sure they're as set up as they possibly can be. However, we don't know what is going to happen between now and then. There isn't a cast iron guarantee. All right. Um, we can see in the news that cases are going up and, um, you know, this area, the local area is experiencing a rise in cases. So we, we can't predict what might happen um, over the coming months. What I would say is that we are putting provisions in place in case of um, any localised lockdowns or bubbles having to be sent home to try and continue that provision as, as effectively as possible. Um, but all I would urge is that um, students just work as hard as they can every single day that they're in school and that they leave no stone unturned to be the best that they could possibly be as well, because we can't predict what's going to happen in the future. So I'm going to hand over to some colleagues now. Um, and what we're going to cover with you is the pastoral care and wellbeing aspect um, that, um, that, that we'll put in place to support students. There's some um, a, a mini, mini workshop on revision and exam preparation. Um, there's a bit of an introduction into virtual learning and um, programmes that students have been shown over the last couple of weeks as to how they're going to support with homework and home learning and how it can be used in school. And Mr Chapman's going to talk about that. And then we're just going to show you a little bit of information about our sixth form provision, because um, I know there are lots of people aspiring to, to, to stay with us on that seven year journey. Um, and again, what we'd normally do at this point of year is start to introduce some of that work. So um, Mr Brennan will be talking to you about um, our sixth form provision. So from me, if I can thank you again all very much for attending this evening. Um, and, and at this point in time, I'm going to hand over to Miss Garforth, who's our year 11 pastoral lead. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Miss Garfield and I want to take this opportunity just to speak to you about the pastoral support we have in place at the Garibaldi School. It's very important to us that every student who comes to the Garibaldi School is happy um, and Kiel surveys suggest that 86% of our students are happy, which you know, compares very favourably to other schools. But this is a difficult time for year 11. We're all aware of that, as well as usual concerns about friendships, about emotional wellbeing, etc. You've got the mock exams and their actual GCSE exams. So we are aware that there are particular concerns for year 11. And we have a number of people who are in school to support year 11 students. My name, as I said, is Miss Garforth. I'm the year 11 pastoral lead. We also have people in student services. So we have Miss Dewsbury, Miss Allison, Mr. Azemia and Miss Hill. So students can pop into student services at any time and speak to a member of staff there. There are also, of course, 
There are also, of course, mentors as well as teachers. We have particular support in student support for identified students as well. So a number of people that they can speak to in school. As I said, we are aware that students in year 11 will have particular concerns and it's, it's our responsibility really to support them through that. Quite often students can speak to a friend and everything's OK, but there are times when they need a little bit more support than that. We can signpost students to online resources such as Headspace, Calm. We can also signpost students to mindfulness apps that they can use and there are a variety of those out there for students to access. In your information pack that was sent to you from school, there's a website, Every Mind Matters. This is an NHS website and I really recommend it as a valuable resource for both parents and for students. On there, there are a number of apps. Um, for example, there's, a, there's an app where students can use music to help express their feelings. There are apps where they can really think about their own mental health and coping strategies. There's resource sections on there for parents to support students as well as students to support themselves. Please take some time to have a look at it. Um, there's stuff on there as well for particularly COVID related issues, which obviously is relevant for this year. Apologies for that. As I said, my name is Miss Garforth. If you have any concerns that you'd like to speak to me about, then please do get in touch. Send me an email and it might be a concern that you have or that your child has passed on to you. But please do get in touch with me or the mentors. As Mr Aldred said, email addresses are all on the website. Thank you. I'm going to pass you on to Mr Dawson now. Thanks, Ms. Garforth. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm head of school, uh, deputy head of school, and my responsibility is really for um, progression. And that's what I want to talk to you about this evening um, in terms of how we best support those students going forwards. Um, there is a range of aspects that I'm going to cover, um, some of which Mr. Aldred has already kind of alluded to and, and touched on. Um, the first one really is around student character because beyond everything else that we do this year, ensuring that students have got the right character and are able to be resilient um, is going to be really important. And so that's something that we've worked on with students throughout the time in school and will continue to in year 11. I um, also want to talk about mock exams because um, they will be coming up this year and students will probably be a bit nervous and anxious about them, but they are actually part of that support that we're, we're putting in place. I also want to talk about how we plug some of those gaps from lockdown, um, improve their understanding in particular subjects and also add that additional support in as the need is identified. Um, and as Mr Aldred said, there'll be a bit of a, a kind of a run through on a effective approaches to revision and exam preparation, which um, again, there is no absolute right method for revision and exam preparation, um, but there'll be some useful tips and hints that you can make use of um, as we go through. And finally, when I finish my section, I'm going to be talking you through something that I think will be really useful to you in terms of keeping on top of what your child is learning in school on a weekly basis and in terms of the expectation for homework, which means that you can offer that kind of best possible support as we go through. You'll be aware of attitudes to learning, I'm sure. Um, every monitoring point uh, students get an attitude to learning score for each subject area and they get an average attitude to learning score and we use that in school um, almost on a daily basis and attitude to learning has really become part of our school culture it's inextricably linked to achievement aspiration and as i say the development of students character and that's going to be absolutely crucial to year 11 students this year as well Throughout assemblies and in conversations in lessons, students are often referred to 
um, particular kind of points of consideration. So the one that's there at the moment um, is one I've used in assemblies for a, for a number of years now. And really important in year 11 that students recognise that there will be things that don't go right this year. There will be failures. Um, but what they've got to do is develop their character to the extent that they recognise that failure is actually part of the path to success. And that is, again, really going to be important when it comes to things like responses to mock exams. Some might not go well. What are students going to do in terms of picking themselves up, moving on from that and actually learning those lessons to help them be more successful the next time that they sit those papers? It's also the case that we talk about success not as a destination, as this quote implies, but that actually success is a journey and students will leave school and they will hopefully go on to be successful adults and have successful working lives. Um, and you might well say to students that if they think school is hard, wait until you've got a job, etc. Success is something that we want to see students having not just through their time in school, but throughout the rest of their lives. And so for them to recognise that they might have some fantastic mock exam results, but we can't afford for them to be complacent and think that they've already done the job and that's it and all finished and wrapped up. Also, in terms of character development, something that we talk about a lot is the word resilience. Um, and in a recent assembly that I did with Year 11, I used this quote that being resilient doesn't mean that you don't get upset or frustrated, despondent or question if you can succeed, but Actually, resilience is the fact that in spite of all those things, you pick yourself up and you have another go. And that's going to be really important as a message for year 11 students. We will be talking about that in school. And as parents, if you could echo that, then obviously that is going to help ensure that they are best placed to be successful as the year goes on. Now, mock exams um, will be taking place this year and we've set aside two slots for those to happen. One is coming up quite soon. Uh, the two weeks after the November um, half term and then again the two weeks after the February half term later in the year. So they are ideally placed to capture what the students have learned in this first half term back and to give them opportunities in between to be able to work off that information. So mock exams are an opportunity for students to complete exams in a formal exam environment so that they're prepared for what's coming down the road um, in the summer to develop those routines and habits and behaviours that are needed because there will be particular expectations of their conduct in those exams. We can find out where there are some learning gaps and what we need to do to kind of address those. And ultimately, our hope is that those mock exams will develop student confidence by showing them and the teachers the progress that they've made over time. Now, having said that, what I recognise is that students may well be quite nervous about doing those exams, that's understandable. You know, they will have to go into an exam hall, they will have to sit with exam papers in front of them um, and they will have to try their best with those. But what we would say is that if students don't prepare adequately for those um, mock exams, then what's going to happen is they will pick, kind of miss out and pass up an opportunity to really kind of um, develop and, and kind of show what they can do. As you can see from where those mock exams fall, we've got a half term between the mock exams for students to respond and do some work to actually get set for the, for the next ones. And looking at that screen, half term six here is where those summer exams will actually fall. And so we are setting up the year with the mock exams to give them the best chance of success. What I want to do now is just talk about some of the things that we're putting in place to supplement what students will be getting kind of day in, day out in lessons. And it is important to recognise, as Mr Aldridge said, that being in school every day and going to those lessons is the most important thing students can do this year to ensure their success. So some of these things will happen um, possibly in addition to or as a supplement to what's going on in, in, uh, in classrooms. Um, so Yippie App is an organisation we're working with and they're providing gap year students who finish their A-levels who are coming into school for us three days a week to offer support in English, maths and science. And I think some of you may already be aware that um, your child has been chosen to access this um, in this first half term. My hope is that we'll use that 
for all students and every student will get a chance to get that additional support at some point between now and the exams. Again, something that some of you may be aware of because some students have already been selected to take part in this. Um, My Tutor is an organisation that do online tutoring sessions using a platform like you can see in the bottom corner there. It's a bit like Zoom. Here, the tutors are um, kind of recent university graduates. In most cases, they've got really strong subject knowledge. And what they do is provide one hour online tuition on a weekly basis, which is really targeted towards that particular student's needs. Um, we get kind of an opportunity to liaise with my tutor to let them know of those areas that students need to work on. And there's an opportunity to um, watch those sessions back if they're recorded. Again, we've got a limited number um, of sessions that we can allocate to students. What we'll do with this is kind of assign those on the basis of need throughout the year. Mr. Aldred talked about study periods. Um, on a Wednesday, a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, there's half an hour with a particular subject in addition to the normal timetabled lessons. And so that's an hour and a half extra learning each week. We've used this for a number of years. It really does have an impact. It's very focused on plugging some of those gaps and it's targeted groups which are each half term changed and rotated so that students have got access to as many subjects as possible over the course of the year. What I would say, and again, um, punctuality to school for year 11 has been really good this year, but if students aren't in for 8.40, then obviously they are missing some of that session. So if you could encourage your child to ensure that they're getting to school punctually, they will absolutely get the most out of those sessions over the coming weeks and months. Um, period seven lesson provision, again, Mr. Aldred talked about. What I would suggest is that it's worth keeping in mind that that is an extra kind of five weeks worth of lesson time that has been put in place. And this isn't optional. It is a compulsory part of the timetable. And again, Year 11 students have taken to it like ducks to water. There's been very few issues. They've really embraced it and, and they recognise the value of it. Um, so that has allowed subjects to integrate revision and recapping into the lesson structure in school, which again helps ensure that they are best prepared when it comes to the end of the year. We've also got a weekly additional study period where students are in an IT space and that's an opportunity just to do some homework, some class set work, to use some of the kind of virtual learning resources that Mr Chatton will talk to you about um, in a few moments time. And again, that opportunity is one where students are expected to work independently on some of that work that has already been set by different subject areas. Um, and the final thing I want to talk about in terms of kind of preparation, this does seem a long way off at the moment, but in May of next year, what we will have, as we have had for a number of years now, is almost a collapsed timetable so that we can give students really intensive time in the morning and in the afternoons before exams the next day so that they can be in the best possible place. Um, what this has been done because of is that students don't get study leave anymore. Um, it might have been that when you were at school, you got two weeks off before the exam started for study leave. We don't do that. Students are in school until they actually finish their last exam. And so it squeezes every last minute um, out of that time to ensure that students um, are best possible, possibly placed for when they, they, they sit those exams in a morning or afternoon session. So Mr Aldred talked about revision um, and one of the things that we often get asked about is by parents is how do we encourage students to revise? What should we be doing? So the, the guidance I'm going to kind of talk through now is almost a snapshot of some of those things. Throughout the year, there'll be more specific guidance for subject areas in particular um, that, again, will hopefully tie in with what we're talking about tonight. So the first of those tips um, is to decide where and when revision is taking place. So there should be a comfortable place to sit and do revision, not on the settee or on the bed, because that kind of prompts um, kind of getting distracted by whatever might be around, not in front of the TV or with a phone in hand, um, unless you might be using GCSE pod, which Mr Chatton will talk about, but having that space where revision is going to take place is going to be important. Deciding when, you know, we know that students will have kind of busy lives outside of school. They're not going to be able to be revising all the time and we do not expect that. But what 
you will know as a family is when the best times in the week are to allocate to revision. So think about family commitments, when people are around, when is the house quietest, so that actually that time can be used really effectively when it's set aside. What we'd also suggest is organising revision. So creating a revision timetable. Now there is a template for this in the pack that was sent home quite recently. There are some phone based apps that can be used to organise revision, but whatever is done, it needs to be planned so that appropriate time can be set aside for different subjects. Um, and that will be different. Some students may want to spend more time on a particular subject than others because that is an area for development for them um, and they're feeling less confident about it. In terms of strategies to revise, my advice would be to use a range of these, but use what works. So there are lots of different ways of revising. You can use revision workbooks, you can write out notes, you can do flashcards. But what we know from research is that actually the more ways that students can revise, if it's things that they can read, hear, see, say, etc., more of that is retained in terms of their long term memory. And that is where that effective revision kind of comes in. So in terms of a couple of those strategies, um, flashcards, they've been around for a long time. They do really work. Um, you don't have to buy them from a shop or a supermarket. You can make your own. Um, but what they do is create one, an active resource that has to be produced in the first place. And then they become something that can be used for testing afterwards. So both in putting them together and in using them, it's reinforcing that kind of um, embedding of information into the long term memory and using them for testing. If you leave more spaces in between that testing, that actually again, that helps your brain recall it more quickly. Another method that I'll highlight mind maps again will work for some people more than others. But the idea of a mind map is you condense everything you need for a topic onto one piece of A3 paper and you start with a central image. You add off the information in kind of trunks in the key important bits. And the idea is to make it colourful, clear and creative because those things really tie into the kind of animal bit of our brain. That means that we are going to remember it far more easily and for a much longer time than if we were dealing with just lots of words on a page, for example, which is quite abstract. So again, mind maps work because they work with how our brain functions. Um, and again, that's another reason why we would suggest that for, for kind of students to try out. What we've got to know, though, is whether those methods are working. Some students will, for example, think revision is just reading through their books that they bought home from school, and this is not effective. Um, there isn't one way to revise, but there are some things that don't work. What students need to work out is what's going to work for them and to try and make that as active a method as possible. So how do you know whether your revision's working? Well, what you do is you test yourself and the best way of testing that is using past exam papers. These we can provide in school as paper copies, but we can also and will also be adding these to the school website so that actually students can test themselves on proper exam questions. The reason they're effective is because it's a true test of current ability. It allows them to apply that knowledge to a range of questions, not always worded exactly the same way. It highlights which revision strategies work and which don't. And then teachers can then mark those papers for students to give specific feedback because knowing the content is not the same as doing well in an exam. And that's something that sometimes students don't fully kind of understand. Again, in terms of practice and revision, what we know is that the best method is using what's called retrieval practice. And what that means is you don't just overload your brain with lots of information and then test yourself after a couple of weeks. You test yourself as you go along. So little chunks of learning, test it, go on to something else. Because if you try and clog your brain up with everything all in one go, you get into the stress of the exam hall and then suddenly your brain shuts down and you can't remember those things. So that method of retrieval practice, testing in an ongoing way is what really helps that information to stick. It's also about prioritising. So whether that's subjects, topics, looking at exam dates as we get closer to the mock exams and to the summer exams. For the mock exams in November, 
in a few days, students will be given an exam timetable so they can see. For example, they might not have any maths exams until the second week. Therefore, maybe they need to think about how they're using their time over the half term holiday. What they've not got to do is get to the point where they're just revising for the exam the day after. It becomes very short termist and then there's no real strategy to how they're going to do that revision. And probably the most important things in terms of that exam preparation at home is that we know I've had lots of conversations with parents in the past who've then said they are really struggling at home. Often that struggling at home takes place without us being aware. If those concerns are shared, we can offer that specific support. Um, it might be that it's the mentor, it might be Miss Garforth, it might be student services, it might be myself that offers that support in terms of the student or you as parents to how you can get the most out of that time and do it effectively. The last thing that I want to mention um, just before I hand over is how you can keep a track of what students should be doing over the course of each week. Recently, we've added to the school website under the year groups tab and under year 11 overviews of what the weekly lesson coverage is for different subject areas, including that homework kind of expectation. So if you go to that section of the website and then within the year 11 tab, if you select weekly lesson focus and homework, what you will see is an overview, something like this. This is a geography one as an example. And you can see the weeks there. We're currently on week two, week commencing the 5th of October. You can see what the lesson coverage is, but also in that second column, you can see what the homework tasks are. And the GCSE pod links will make more sense when Mr Chatton speaks to you in a few moments. So those lesson overviews are there to help you get a sense of what your child should be doing, could be doing in terms of that homework and that in kind of lesson work that's being done as well. So. My final thought again is that quote that I shared earlier. For me, the key is to ensure that um, students have that resilience to keep going. Um, what will stop them being successful is if they give up and don't have another go. Um, and we will be throughout our support in school, making sure that students do give things another go, but they will need picking up at times. And if you do need support, picking them up at home and you've worried about them and concerned again, as um, Miss Garforth has said, let us know and we will offer that support. So thank you very much. I'm going to hand over at this point to um, Mr Chatton, who's the head of virtual learning, and he's going to talk about um, some of the kind of virtual learning um, opportunities that there are that are available to students. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Jason, and good evening to everybody. Um, the first thing I want to take you through is Microsoft Teams. Now, most of you are going to be aware of this platform because we went to Microsoft Teams uh, in March uh, last year when um, lockdown basically kicked in. Now, since then, a lot of development has work has been done and a lot of staff now have been received further training and in the school as well. We've been training all students to make sure they really understand the use of this platform. So. Um, this is our first point of reference and this is where I would advise you as parents or um, carers at home to make sure that you are checking that the students are checking in on Teams on their devices. So you really want to get Microsoft Teams installed to the handsets, to your phones, to any available laptop um, or PC that uh, students have access to. This is where staff are going to be dropping in a lot of valuable materials such as support, uh, support tasks, homework, extra enrichment, um, assignments. This is where we're going to be able to deploy that and where you'll be able to pick that stuff up. Um, also, if we do face any kind of unnecessary disruption or any kind of form of remote learning, this is the platform where we're going to go to uh, to make sure that work is being done. So as much as possible, do need to make sure that uh, this software is available and that students are accessing it at home. Now to that end, I have put into the year 11 full year group, so all year 11s will see this, I've popped an assignment in there um, just to see how many are checking in on that. So if you know there's some students at home now that perhaps haven't been checking their MS Teams, I would advise they go in there and just check that, you know, 
check in on there so I know that people are checking in on a daily basis. You can install this onto any phone. Uh, the App Store makes it perfectly available um, to you and you can get it as a downloadable actual installation on a PC or a laptop. You don't have to do this if the PC or laptop is one that a student might borrow in the day. In the case of a remote learn, you don't have to install the app. It just makes it a little bit easier to use. You can run it in an actual browser window. It does look a little bit like this. If I can just move along. Here we go. So this is what it looks like when you sign in. Um, you've got to click the sign in button and the username is, as you can see there, is the same account that the student uses in the day to log into our systems, but with the addition of the email address ending on there. Um, we found that most people's problems when they were logging into this platform in March was the fact that they just weren't really putting in the correct login credentials, particularly with the email address ending. So all students should know this by now, but it's worth checking it out. And it's worth making sure students at home are logging in and it is working. Their password is the same as the ones they use to access our normal system, so it shouldn't be an issue. Once they do log into the platform, um, they're going to have a navigational bar which looks similar to this one down here on the side. Any alerts or activities are going to come through heavily in this little window here like you would see on any social media. And you'll also see highlights on the particular groups or teams that they are a part of. So they know they're being signposted to the areas that they need to check in order to pick up that work that staff are dropping on the platform. So this is what they need to check. So when they go in each uh, evening or every couple of days, just to check this out and check nothing has been dropped in here um, on these alerts. When they go into a specific team, they're going to get a slightly different view. So they're going to see something along these lines. And under the post section is the thread or channel of where people are talking. Now, this is going to be mainly steered by a member of staff, um, but this is where they'll see little uh, alerts to say here, is a new assignment. Now, in the case of remote learning, this is also the zone where if we were to do any kind of live teaching, this is where you would need to come as a student in order to see that live teach element. So you just drop into the actual relevant team, you'd go to the post section and there would be a large blue banner where there would be a join option to join into that live session. So that's how they'd navigate there. The other important section is the assignments, which is what I've got focus on at the moment on this screenshot. And this is where you'll see a list of assignments with due dates. And I've asked staff from this point forward to ensure that any named kind of assignments or revision or anything to do with enrichment activities, something to help the students revise or prepare for those exams, I've asked them to make sure that they prefix all of these with the date that they're intended to be delivered. So that students, sorry, students know what is expected on what day and they can check it um, and make sure they're reading the right things because it can be easy over time perhaps if that isn't the case to lose track of which one is active. Just my advice would be look at the due dates, look when they were set and that will kind of steer students in the right direction. Staff are able to see who has viewed or turned in work on this platform so it's really easy to know those students that are not partaking or engaging with this process. So as much as possible, please encourage that use at home. All students have access to a copy of Office. So you can get this by going to office.com and there's an option to either log in and they can just log in using the same login credentials that they do for MS Teams, or they can opt to download and install the software to the actual machine that they're on, so preferably laptop or a, a computer. This will run, they log in, they have full permissions, they have a full license to run Office 365. I just wanted to make you aware of that because some people might not know. Uh, so do take uh, use of that and do get on that if you have not already done so. The last big element I want to talk about is, and you'd heard reference to it tonight already uh, from Mr Dawson, is the GCSE pod. Now, the trust has spent quite a lot of investment in getting this platform operational for all students, and it is an amazing site for revision materials. The way they've organised it is they've done these little pods, and I have got a short video in a minute. It's not very long, but it just it explains how, as a parent, you can support your the students at home uh, with this platform. But in a nutshell, they're small little three to five minute videos, little revision pods on literally every 
part of the syllabus for, for almost all of the courses that are offered here at Garibaldi. And just to give you some numbers, at the moment, as of today, over 4,300 pods have been watched by our students since we launched this at the start of this term. Um, some students, there's a handful now in year 11 who have watched over 200 pods. And it's proven that if they're a high user, that that's a high user, I think is around 150 pods in the year, that they on average will get one additional grade better than they would have. So this is a great opportunity and people need to seize it and they need to jump on this. So I'm going to put on a video for you now um, with, from GCSE pod and then afterwards I'm just going to summarise the things I've been talking about and then I'll hand over to Mr Brennan. So here's GCSE, uh, enjoy this video and I'll be back with you in a moment. This video will tell you all about GCSE pod and how it can support your child both in school and at home. GCSE Pod is an education publisher and we're used by over a third of schools in the UK. We're so successful because of our award-winning pods, which are three to five minute videos that are easy to access, mapped to the curriculum and are based on the concept of Netflix, YouTube and Spotify, so they're engaging for students. Your child has their own GCSE Pod account and they can access pods simply by logging in on their PC, laptop or mobile. Pods can be downloaded to watch offline too. Here's an example of a pod. I'm so stressed. How many times have you heard someone say that or even said it yourself? I'm Jeanette Kwachi and in this pod, I want to share with you how I manage stress. First of all, what exactly is stress? Well, stress means lots of different things to different people, but really it's just our body's response to either an external pressure or the way we feel about a situation. Stress can also mean our bodily response to a situation. When we perceive that we're under pressure, our body experiences a fight or flight response. This is our stress response. It's useful if the pressure is something we need to fight or run away from, but not so useful if the pressure is something like an exam or competition. Teachers might use pods as part of their lessons or encourage your child to use it to revise for their exams. Students can create their own personal revision playlists and use our Study Smart pods to learn more about revising effectively. As well as watching pods, your child can independently access check and challenge assessments to test their knowledge and track their progress and teachers can see this information too. Teachers may set homework using GCSE pod and ask your child to watch specific pods and answer questions. Students will be sent a boost playlist after their assignment has been marked, which is made up of any pods focusing on the areas they struggled with in the assignment. Learning activities transform watching a pod into active learning, and this is something you can do with them at home too. We have lots of resources that you can access as parents and carers on gcsepod.com forward slash parents. And if you want to learn more about GCSE Pod, why not sign up to our parent and carer webinar at gcsepod.com forward slash webinars forward slash pod up presents. So I'll just finish up by saying to you, if you could make sure that the Microsoft Teams app and the GCSE Pod app are both installed to student devices at home, that will greatly help them in all of their revision uh, when they do that from, uh, from home. I'm going to hand over now, if my computer works, there we go, to uh, Mr. Brennan, who is the director of Sixth Form. So I shall hand you over now. Okay, good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chatton. Uh, I very quickly want to talk to you about uh, the next potential steps for students at the Garibaldi School uh, in joining the Garibaldi School sixth form, the next step on their journey towards being amazing. The sixth form is very much a part of the school I'm very proud of and as the students are making their move towards the end of year 11 and those amazing outcomes, they also need to be thinking about what comes next. 
The sixth form very much continues to be a place in the school where we create a supportive and caring learning community and gives our students the confidence to prepare themselves for a successful adult life. We still are built around the mantra pride, respect and achieve and it's something that we're exceptionally proud of. In terms of the culture of the sixth form moving forwards, then if I can just move on one slide. We actually raised the bar a little. We expect the attitude to learning to increase that little bit. Mr. Oldwood referred to his formula of being ATL of being better than 1.9. Well, we think in sixth form that should be 1.5. But we do want students to come and feel proud and clever of their academic sixth form where they come to be successful. So we embed a work and revision culture. And much of those character traits that Mr. Dawson spoke about, they are still central to being successful in our sixth form we ask students to be the very highest of standards and the role models for the rest of the school and thankfully i'm pleased to say i'm really proud of what the outcomes are with that why choosing garibaldi school sixth form because there's a lot of alternatives out there but we think sixth form is the best place for our students students have been successful at garibaldi through key stage three and key stage four and they continue to be successful in key stage five they stay with teachers that they know who are experienced and successful in the provision of A-levels and equivalent subjects. We still know that the students still need that level of support that they've had through their time at Garibaldi. And we also recognise that as young adults, they start to become more interdependent. Um, what that doesn't mean is that we leave them on their own. We provide them a lot of support and the tools to become that independent young learner ready to take those next steps. We help them take that ownership of their learning and prepare them for that successful adult life. And we've got a proven track record of raising aspirations and helping students to achieve their goals. We do this through ensuring that we're more than just a provider of three subjects which students study. We put lots of opportunities on and even through more recent times where things have been a little bit more difficult to provide the same opportunities for students, we look at the vast range of alternatives that are in place. We've got a, a detailed PSEHE personal development structure that ensures that their future decisions are well informed and they're clear. We ensure that we meet the Gatsby benchmark so that students have got a full understanding of what the next steps are available to them. We use platforms such as Unifrog consistently, which allow students to investigate all potential next steps, all different universities and all the offers that are available post uh, their A-level provision. We're a small but growing sick form, but what that does allow us to do is offer more bespoke support with applications for universities, personal statement writing, and we have strong links with local universities who come in and offer workshops on things like personal statements and the UCAS process. We hope to, as things hopefully get back towards normal, we, we hope to restart the uh, Lincoln University UCAS fairs that we go to, and we hope to start bringing back really positive work experience for the end of year 12. So the support with their progression through, through towards those amazing outcomes uh, is also supported with the progression that we know that they need in terms of accessing university, high level apprenticeships, or whether they want to enter the world of work. We have a wide subject offer and growing uh, and some of the subjects we offer are at Garibaldi and they're listed on the left. But we also know that we can work well with our partner schools in the trust. And with that in mind, we offer the sciences in chemistry, physics and biology at the Meaden School. And we also offer sociology there. I really want to stress that students that study at the Meaden School are very much our students and get the very same care and compassion that we offer to students that study all three of their A-levels here, and the outcomes are equally impressive. And the results speak for themselves in terms of last year's results and destinations. We're really proud of our year 13 with some of those grades and those destinations to where students found themselves. We found our students going off to adult nursing, which is quite an achievement. We had applications for the RAF and Nottinghamshire Police as an alternative, higher level apprenticeships locally. And obviously we're going to highlight that we had a student go to do engineering at the University of Oxford. But we also appreciate that 
being successful in sixth form isn't necessarily about achieving just A star grades. It's about the progress because success is very dependent on their, a student's starting point. And you can see down the list there that we've got a range of students that are achieving above half a grade uh, on, on top of their expected target, which just really emphasises how amazing their progress can be with the support structures in place. So the next step on the journey would be to attend a similar live event through Microsoft Teams. And again, as Mr. Aldred said earlier, we'd much rather be standing in front of you talking to you and showcasing our sixth form off. But as things stand, it will be through Microsoft Teams. And the date for that is on Thursday, the 12th of November. In the advance of that, information will be sent out to all parents. And I really look forward to seeing you all there. Should you have any questions in the meantime or should any of the students have any questions in the meantime, feel free to contact me. My email is at the bottom of this slide. Students know where to find me and they're always welcome to come and have a chat about their um, questions or queries about entering our sixth form. So with that, I'd like to, on behalf of the team, wrap up tonight and thank you for attending our live event. If you do have any further questions, please direct these to the relevant member of staff in the school or the school email address, which is office at garibaldischool.co.uk. I'd like to say that there's a recording of tonight's event uh, and it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, in the next day or so, and a link will be added to the website. We hope you found it really useful. We hope you found it really informative and hopefully we can all play a part in that partnership moving towards amazing outcomes for our current year 11. Thank you very much and good night.